Toby Mac has released part two to the Roost Cruise known as Delta Doolittle, and this time it takes place in the internet. So it's already a zero out of 10 for me because it's clearly just ripping off Battle Network, which should have a collection on consoles by now. I'd like to state that this throwaway joke was clearly responsible for the legacy collection being created. And no, I don't know what dilutions of grandeur means. The Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection is out, and I am absolutely stoked. This collection hosts all six mainline entries and their alternate versions. Full disclosure, this is a sponsored video, but the joke's on them because I was going to do this title anyway. These games were a huge part of my childhood. It helped inspire my first original, and I can't air quote that enough, series where my friends and I went into the video game world. I've always been a fan of Mega Man, even back when I was a widow baby who would put his poster board project on his arm and pretend it was the Mega Buster. Are poster board projects still a thing? So when there was a new Mega Man game coming out, I had to try it, and it was so cool. It was Mega Man in a digital world with spiffy new look and awesome abilities. To those that don't know, the Battle Network series is a bit of a mix. It's an RPG and sort of a card collector game that takes place in a make-believe futuristic world where you can access the internet from all sorts of appliances like your fridge. And, uh, well, you access them with small handheld devices that can set alarms for you. Check your... Email, make phone calls. Okay, but like it's super futuristic because on your phones you have these assistants that are kind of like virtual you tubers. You know, playing this again, I guess it isn't as far fetched as it was back in 2001. I am old. Essentially, all the stories follow Lan Hikari and his Netnavi Mega Man. Netnavis are helpers that are housed inside the PETs, or personal terminals, which are used to send the Navi into cyberspace and interact with others, appliances, and what have you. When in the regular world, you control Lan, and you'll generally move around, talk to NPCs, solve puzzles, and explore. It's the type of RPG that has all sorts of goodies and fun flavor text hidden away in every corner. Eventually, you'll find jack-in spots where you can send Mega Man to the cyber world. On the overworld, most non-major jack-in spots are kind of like treasure chests, leading you to a square area with a few goodies inside. The major ones either large networks or dungeons of sorts. The cyber world sections are the more action-y parts of the game, seeing as how they take place in the internet, almost every five seconds something will attack you and you'll be forced to engage or ignore them and walk away. Seeing as how the game is called Battle Network, it makes sense that battles are a big part of it. There really isn't any kind of comparison to be made because no other non-indie title has a battle system similar to this. And the indie titles that do, we're just trying to be Battle Network. Which is one of the reasons this game is amazing. Fights take place with each side having a 3x3 grid to move around in. You start around by selecting your battle chips, which are essentially collectible attack cards. Chips of the same nature, letter, or ones with an asterisk can be used in the same turn in the order that they are loaded in. There are a large variety of effects. Some are basic attacks, some are summons, and others manipulate the field. If you don't have any chips, you can still attack with the Mega Buster, but it doesn't hit as hard, generally. Battles aren't always won by who has the stronger chips, since trapping your opponent and giving yourself room to breathe is key as well. Most random encounters are pretty straightforward, but things get more complicated when you square off against bosses. Depending on how fast and how stylish you clear a fight, you'll be awarded a busting rank. Quicker battles with simultaneous deletions and minimal damage result in higher ranks, which increase your chances of being awarded rare items. You don't level up in this title per se, and instead find bits and pieces to tweak Mega Man's stats to your liking. Some titles have the Navi Customizer, which lets you pick and choose pieces and run them through a program to power up Mega. But it comes with certain rules, like two of the same color not being able to touch, cross pieces not going on the command line, and solids needing to be on the command line. In certain titles, you can even get style changes to customize Mega Man's appearance and abilities even further, even offering him elemental weaknesses at this point. The collection includes a Buster Max mode, which makes the Mega Buster do 100 damage per shot. Those are some mean lemons. I admittedly used this mode to kind of breeze through the start of a few titles since I've already played them before in the past, but I wouldn't recommend it if you were brand new to the series. Being a collection, it also comes with an illustration gallery, music player, and all of the movie patch cards that were only available in Japan prior to this. That's right, baby! Remember Baktai? It's back! In card form! Kind of going off of that, almost all of the titles have a fantastic post-game segment that rewards collectors with difficult boss fights. All the titles have plenty of optional battles too, so it pays to go around and check out a lot of stuff and talk to people. But the absolute coolest part of this collection is online multiplayer. I was so hyped for this. I always loved multiplayer in Battle Network, but back in my day, we had to use a link cable both ways to play with our buddies. Admittedly, a while back, I had created a Battle Network forum where people could collect cards by posting in it and customize their Mega Man. And then we used cheat devices to do pallet swaps and other stuff while we hosted tournaments and battles. But now I can just host tournaments whenever I want, which you know I will once I actually, you know, 
get good because man i love these titles but i am not great at them unfortunately though it does seem like pvp on pc is kind of scarce so if that's a big sell for you i'd probably go for the switch version it does seem a little more lively and it seems like a lot of people tend to hover around titles three and six for pvp if you got buddies to battle though, it doesn't really matter because you can host private matches. Plus, I know a lot of people are gonna be going through the games first before attempting PvP. There are casual and ranked versions of battling. You can also trade and compare chips with players too. I'm honestly just so happy that this game is back and I can't wait for the Star Force collection, baby. But really, if you've never tried these titles, you should. It's a pretty unique experience. Even without the awesome battle system, the game has a wonderful cast of characters, fun writing, and charming sections. Heck, even just the virtual Mega Man on the main menu is enough to make me smile. Now obviously, you might be thinking it's best to start with Battle Network 1 and just go straight through, but most titles you can kind of just pick up and play on their own. One is the most bare bones, but it does introduce a lot of concepts that are revisited in later titles. Most people prefer 3 and 6, and 5 tends to be a love it or hate it title because it introduces a tactic style of gameplay. 3 is my personal favorite for both story and gameplay, but the others of course have plenty to draw too. I'd probably put Battle Network 1 or 4 at the bottom, one because it's the first entry and it's kind of missing a lot of the good further entries brought in, and 4 because the story and soul system is pretty weak compared to others. 2 and 5 above those, 2 set the framework for future entries, and whereas a lot dislike 5, I kinda like the liberation missions. Hands down though, 3 and 6 are must plays in my opinion. All of them are good, but those two are the best. If I do have any complaint about this legacy collection, it's probably that there's no crossplay and that network transmission isn't a part of it, cause that game was actually pretty cool. It was battle network, but also classic Mega Man. But on top of releasing this collection, they're already releasing the anime online too for everyone to enjoy. I remember watching it when I was younger and getting super hyped because there's all these awesome battles and like Mega Man and Land <laughs> oh, Did little Mega Man fall down? Good.